webinar, Brands on Digital Film, Incorporating Video. First, let me tell you a bit about Albers Communications Group. We are a full-service PR, digital marketing, and video production agency headquartered in Omaha, Nebraska. We strongly believe that offline and online tactics go hand in hand and work best when used as part of an integrated communication strategy. Our video production team is comprised of experienced journalists with prior on-camera and production experience. Our peers have recognized our video work as being among the best in the industry. We work with our clients to develop a video plan, shoot, edit, and fully produce each video in-house. We represent clients in all 50 states and Canada where our PR and digital marketing specialists help our clients achieve positive exposure nationally and locally in their operating markets. We have specialized expertise helping companies become leaders in their markets and their industries. As I mentioned, my name is Ann Hadfield, and I am the Video Production Manager as well as an Account Manager here at Albers. You can feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or follow me on Twitter. So here's a look at the topics that we'll be covering today. First, I'll help you identify why video could be the right choice to help you reach your target audiences. Second, I will provide direction on how to develop and implement a video strategy that best suits your needs. Next, I'll talk about the different ways to use video to reach your target audience and how to maximize your viewers' view video's viewership. I'll share with you the deliverables that every video should have, and at the end I'll take time to answer the questions that have been chatted in. Again, throughout the presentation, please feel free to use the chat function on the lower left side of your screen, and I'll address those questions at the end of the presentation. So let's get started. Why video? You may be looking for a new or unique way to reach your target audience, and video is a great strategy to explore. For starters, 40 billion videos are streamed in the U.S. each month. 75 million people watch videos online each month, and $6.3 billion – that's with a B – will be spent on video ads in 2015. With that said, video is powerful. When done right, it has a large impact on the audience. Think about how many videos you may see throughout the day, whether social media, on websites, or even on television. 90% of information transmitted to the brain is visual. Visuals are processed, processed 60,000 times faster in the brain than text. Video can tell a story quickly and leave a bigger impression than a written article when your audience thinks back on that story. Video is also oftentimes emotional. Through video we can connect with your customers on a deeper level. Whether we want them to laugh or cry, we can move them to action through their emotions. You've heard the saying, I'm sure, a picture is worth a thousand words, but what is video worth then? According to Forrester Research, a single minute of video is worth 1.8 million words. Studies have shown that people are much more receptive to advertisements when they are shared from their peers through social networks, and videos lead the way when it comes to search in Twitter and Google rankings. One in five Twitter users discover videos each day from tweeted links. What's more, two-thirds of Twitter users feel it's worth watching videos tweeted by brands. Now this is important because even if you don't have someone's social media friend sharing your content, your video will still be impactful when posted by your company. Just last month, Twitter also purchased a live video streaming company, Periscope, showing their move to bolster their video capabilities. Lastly, the chances of getting a page one listing on Google increase 53 times with video. So what are your goals? Now that I've explained why video is important and impactful, we can explore how you can identify which video strategy is right for you. There are three questions you must ask yourself. And first, like I said, are what are your goals? The second is who is your audience? And the third is how do you want your audience to feel? On the next few slides, we'll take a closer look at each of these questions. Video is a smart tool to use when it comes to achieving your communications goals. Those goals could include educating your audience, whether it's to show a new product or explain why you are the leader in your industry. It could be to inspire positive action. We've done several videos for Big Brothers Big Sisters, and the primary reason why they want to do videos is to recruit new volunteers, and it works really well for them. The third reason could be to serve as a resource or becoming known as an expert in your area. All of these goals can be accomplished through video. So 
So next, let's take a look at who your audience is and how we can reach them. There are several factors you should consider, and they can be broken down into demographics and psychographics. First, demographics. Define your target audience by creating a bullseye. This can be determined by creating a fictional person that you think of as your ideal client. Determine their age, gender, location, education, and marital status, and where they get their information. Is it through social media? Is it online? Is it through direct emails? Get the facts. Then look at the psychographics. What type of personality does your bullseye have? What are his or her values? What is he or she interested in? Are they tied to emotions or looking to gather a large amount of information quickly? Identifying the specifics about the type of person you are trying to reach can help you determine how they make decisions. The third step is in developing a video strategy is to ask yourself how you want to make your audience feel through the video. What are the emotions that will be targeting with this video? Will you be using testimonials to tie into that emotion, or will you go for a scripted video? I feel if you are looking for genuine heartfelt testimonials, an interview type video is best to capture the raw emotions of your subject. If you are looking to educate your audience and have specific information that you need to include, a scripted video may be the better option for your strategy. Think about how you want emotions to play into the action you hope to see from your audience. If you are a nonprofit looking for donations or volunteers, telling the story of someone your organization has helped can be a powerful way to move the audience toward action. Now that you have identified your strategy, it is time to implement it. Before you dive in, here are a few things you should do first. Do your research. This could mean gathering background information on those who you will interview, or compiling information on the product that you will be focused on. Either way, it is important to go into the process informed. Plan. Create a storyboard. Now this doesn't necessarily mean a script. If you are going the route of an interview style video, identify who will be interviewed and get an idea of what you hope they say. Create questions around those points and then see where the conversation with them takes you. Your storyboard may change after you have conducted the interviews, and that's okay. It's still good to go into the process with a plan. Now if you are doing a scripted educational video for example, your storyboard will be much more strict. Envision the final product. Have an idea of how you would like the video to look before you start filming. This could be fluid depending on the topic, but it's good to have an idea in mind before you start. Write out the script before you begin editing. Even if you are doing an unscripted video, simply listen to the sound that you have collected and organize it on paper before you dive into editing it with software. Once the video is produced, it is time to share, share, share. Use it across all forms of communication from your website to social media, or send it directly to your customers through email newsletters. The more you put it out there, the more eyes that will come across it. Then be sure to measure and analyze. When you build your plan, include the ways you will measure success. Then at the conclusion of your campaign, see if you met your goals and figure out what lessons that can be learned for the long term. As I have already mentioned, video can be used for a variety of reasons to convey different messages. Here is a breakdown of some of the many uses of video. The promotion of a product or service. Now we did a video for Animal Clinic of Council Bluffs and Glenwood Veterinary Clinic's website. We showcased their expertise and service to customers through the video. It was an interview style video with the four vets and several clients giving testimonials. Secondly, you could use the video for recruitment. Another one of our clients is Strategic Health Solutions, and we did a video focusing on the culture of their company. We interviewed CEO Peg Stessman as well as several other employees about why they like working for the company. You can use video to educate or inform your audience. We created a video for Mary Maids, which was a scripted video showcasing two owners walking the audience through how to make the perfect bed. The upbeat video has both creative sketches as well as video of the Mary Maids owners making a bed, which kept the feel light and fun. And finally, as I've been saying this whole webinar, you can use video to connect to the audience through emotion. This is a video we did for National Big Brothers Big Sisters showcasing the 2014 National Big Sister of the Year who is from right here in Omaha. 
we interviewed the big sister as well as her little sister and got some great emotional sound about what they've been through together. The video was shown at the National Big Brothers Big Sisters Conference, and we even won a PRSA Nebraska Best in Show Tactical Entry Award for the video. Now, all of the videos were leveraged on the company's websites as well as through their social media for these examples. So what good is a video if nobody sees it? To maximize viewership, there are some rules to follow. First, you must grab your audience right away. Begin with emotion or creativity, something to surprise your audience and have them hooked. If you connect with them from the start, they are more likely to stay through the duration of your video. And even if you grab them right away, remember that your customer has a lot going on. The attention span of audiences continues to get shorter and shorter. One to two minute videos are best for online use, and we try never to go over five minutes for our clients' videos. Editing can be the hardest part when you try to fit it all in, but remember that the audience isn't going to know what you had to cut, so they are not going to miss it. And finally, share it across multiple platforms. Get it out there on your website. Get it directly to your target audience by linking to it in your email newsletters. You can link to it in your blogs. Share it on your social media channels, which oftentimes get shared again and reach your customers' friends. And use it when applicable in marketing meetings or opportunities in front of clients. Now you can see in the example there, the Big Brothers Big Sisters video has nearly 3,000 likes. That's on the National Organization's YouTube channel. So keeping all that in mind, it's important to make it easy for your audience to view it. Visual content like video is social media ready and social media friendly. It's easily likable and easily shareable. Images or video on social media get more engagement than just links or text. Plus linking to your video on your website will drive up traffic on your website as well. So first, make it likable. We hope to have accomplished this earlier in our planning when we thoughtfully decided who the audience would be and how to connect with them. Also, grabbing them right away as we discussed is important when sharing on social media. Make it as easy as possible for them to spread your video across the web by inserting social media sharing links under the video on your website, and by encouraging shares immediately after the video finishes. Often a viewer will click away within seconds, but a quick encouragement to share can drive up the results. Make sure the video is easily watched on a mobile device as well. Because so many people use their phones to access social media, linking to a video needs to be easy for them to see on their mobile devices. This can be as easy as using YouTube or another mobile-friendly video service to share your video. Now let's take a look at the deliverables each video should have. First, as I said, we want to grab the audience's attention right away. If you feel, fail to do this, you will lose the audience before they can see the meat of your video and miss out on the chance to have your audience take the action you want. Second, every video must have a storyline. Much like a good book, we want to give our audience a beginning, middle, and end. Oftentimes there may be a problem which needs to be solved or a build up to what's coming. All of this makes for a good video when a storytelling format is followed. We also want to provide characters that the audience cares about. This can be as easy as the employees who are excited about their work environment and makes the audience want to feel the same way about their job, or telling the touching story of a volunteer who took time to make a difference in someone's life. Both give the audience a reason to keep watching to see what happens to that character. It's also important to wrap up the video with a call to action. What do you want your audience to do now that they've seen the video? Call you? Visit your website to learn more about you? Share the video with others? Sometimes the call to action may be general brand awareness, and that's okay too. But leave your audience feeling like they've gotten the point of your message. All right, that wraps up our discussion on video today. But before we get into questions, I'd like to invite you to our next webinar. It's Wednesday, May 20th at 10 a.m. Central Time. Tom Albers will be presenting How Much Should You Invest in PR? He'll break down the elements of an integrated PR and digital marketing strategy, and how to pick and choose what your company needs to fit your budget. Again, that's Wednesday, May 20th at 10 a.m. Central Time. You can register online at the address on your screen, www.alberscommunications.com slash learning hyphen opportunities. 
And just one more housekeeping item. I'd like to ask each of you to take a few minutes to fill out the questionnaire that will appear on your screen at the end of the presentation. You can provide your comments about today's webinar or share topic suggestions that you'd like us to address in future webinars. And now we'll take a few moments to answer any questions that you may have been chatted in. If you haven't done so already, you can feel free to chat in your questions through the box on the lower left side of the screen. Uh, one question we have is, when talking about the storyboard, does the company need to create one, or do, does Albers work with them to do that? Albers definitely will work with you to create the vision for your video. Um, if you have something in mind already, that's great, and we will work with you to make it uh, fit whatever type of video we need to pursue. Um, but if you don't have that in mind, then we'll work with you. We'll ask you the questions about what you'll be using the video for, what audiences you want to reach, and we'll help you develop that. Another question that we have is, uh, can you use a prompter for scripted videos? Uh, we get that a lot. A lot of people want to have cue cards or a fallback when they're trying to do a script. And it's really hard for someone who doesn't use a prompter every day to look natural doing it. So we usually try to suggest using um, you know, short, uh, uh, short scripts that would help the person look natural when they're talking um, and help them to be able to do it without a prompter or cue cards. It's just too hard to look like you're not reading it um, if you are. So it's usually better to just try to have the person talk about the subject, especially if they're familiar with it and they know it anyway. Just have them kind of use their own voice to go over that rather than have a scripted script on a prompter. All right, if there's no other questions, we'd, I'd like to thank you for taking time to join me today. We will send the recording of this presentation to you within the next day. And if you have further questions, feel free to contact me by visiting alberscommunications.com. Thank you.